What's up all Smash Brothers fans, your very own personal Smash Boards of YouTube. Spoon Beast is back talking everything that is speculation, character reviews, uh, wish lists, all that under the sun as we talk about Super Smash Brothers 4 in preparation for E3 2013 where the game is going to be officially unveiled to all of us endearing fans. Uh, we are getting down to the nitty gritty. We're in our last three weeks uh, before the actual event, the last three weeks of May. Which means that we're on our last three weeks of doing uh, the character reviews and wish lists, so to speak. Because after that, I'm going to be previewing and covering the event right at the beginning of June. So, we're on our last three videos for this. So, this is yet another multi-requested video, as requested by faithful subscribers, 96KJD, via a comment on one of my previous character reviews in Paper Mario. And, of course, uh, requested via inbox last week, the same request, by the Super Mario Fan 10. Shout out to both of you guys. Thanks for the idea. Even though it was kind of my idea anyway, I was going to get around to it. But I've noticed that as well, I've been doing a lot of character reviews as of late. I did, uh, so far this spring, I've done Mega Man, Paper Mario, Banjo and Kazooie. And last week, I did the likely third party characters for the fourth game, which is basically just a list of characters and reviewing all their chances of getting in the game. So this one, you might believe it or not, I did plan on getting about. It's not a likely suggestion, that's why I left him out of uh, the likely character video last week, because I was thinking realistically, who the fuck could get in from different companies. But he's one of my you know, most beloved characters in gaming today. And that, of course, is none other than Sora from the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Uh, basically, both uh, the personal message and the comment on my video basically just asked me about having a suggestion of me talking about Sora from Kingdom Hearts and just doing an overall video on him. So we're doing character reviews, and yes, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the month. The next two weeks of May, I'm also going to do character reviews, just to kind of, it's kind of the theme of the fall, or the fall, it's the theme of the, you know, getting down to the nitty gritty of, of spring before we enter E3. You know, we got two more weeks left. I might as well just do character reviews. You know, I got a whole bunch of them, if you can believe that, right? Uh, so next two weeks are also going to be for character reviews. Now, if you wanted to see more things like features, how the game's going to play out, I can of course continue this after E3 wraps up going into the summer because I still need to figure things out and figure out what I'm going to do content-wise in terms of direction for this channel after the event because all the whole half a year has been about building up to the event. So what I'm going to do afterwards, I think I might want to change it up a little bit. We'll see. Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Sora being in Smash Brothers. Dude, I love it to happen. Yes. Does it have any chance of happen? Yeah, or yes. Does it have any chance of happening? Not really. A Square Enix character of any kind being in a Smash Brothers game is... To me, it's extremely unrealistic. I mean, you might be able to get away with that for PlayStation All-Stars, but they didn't even get away with that. To this day, there's still no Square representative in that game. And Nintendo being able to get one seems extremely unlikely, too. I know since Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of wrapped up, the PlayStation 2 uh, series that was going on for the first second games, which are, of course, the best. A lot of the handheld spin-offs, despite the one coming out for the PSP, uh, Birth by Sleep, a lot of those, like, 358 in two days, and the most recent one, uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, 3D, Dream Drop Distance, you know, 3D, 3D is in the title. Those were released for the DS and the, the 3DS, respectively which are Nintendo consoles. Now, that doesn't mean, to me, it doesn't mean jack shit, because it's just a way to, you know, sh continue the series without making a third game. That's what everybody wants, and when a third game gets made, it's probably going to be made for the PlayStation 4. It Apparently, it missed an entire generation of regular consoles, despite the fact that the Kingdom Hearts HD collection, which is uh, the first one, and Recoded, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's the PlayStation 2 port of... No, Rechain of Memories, Recom, which is basically the Game Boy Advance uh, spin-off game that happens between the first and the second one. So they're calling it Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5, which means one and a half. So that's, you know, the first Kingdom Hearts game ported to PlayStation 3 along with the 
PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3 ported version of Chain of Memories. So that's coming out later this year, and yes, I'm going to answer your question right now. Yes, I'm definitely getting it, because on top one thing, my PlayStation 2 doesn't have legs. It's going to last forever. Uh, I've broken the controllers for it, so I have this bulky-ass third-party wireless controller, which sucks horribly. It's awful. And it its battery drains, and it's basically on its last legs. It's going to break, and I have no other replacement controllers for it. And I wish my PlayStation 3 did, you know, have... Uh, su uh, support of the PlayStation 2 games. For whatever reason, they didn't have that for 100% for PS3. Mine doesn't work at all with um, with any PlayStation 2 games. I heard there's ways you can make that happen, but, but fuck it. It should already be backwards compatible with the previous console anyway, just like the Wii was with the GameCube. That was an expectation. Didn't happen for me, so whatever. I'll get the PlayStation 3 port of one of my favorite games ever so that I can kind of just keep the old one as a collection and then actually play it again on a comfortable controller for a console that'll actually use it. So, with that being said, that's also coming out for the PlayStation 3. And if they, when they get around to making the third one, which they will, it's going to be the end of the Xehanort saga, and they continue on to different story arcs. And the third game is going to be all about building up to a new saga of the series, which will be 4 and onward. The third one's going to wrap up the story that started in the first one with Xehanort, you know, taking over the, the role of Ansem and the Heartless, and all that smorgasbord that you already know all about. For those of you who, who follow the series, those of you who don't remember, like, oh, what the, the hell is this guy even talking about? But, you know, it's going to wrap up that series. And it's going to happen eventually. And now, since it missed a generation, minus being re-released, it's going to definitely, obviously, be in the works of PlayStation 4. On to Sora being in Smash, now that I kind of got that little tangent out of the way. He doesn't really have a chance. You know, we've talked about Gino. I mean, he's one of the characters I'd love to see in Smash Brothers too. He's also owned by Square. He's got no chance of being in Smash Brothers. Just like Cloud or any Final Fantasy character that may... Or even before him, the, the characters that appeared on the Super Nintendo have no chance of being revised. Because that's Square's intellectual property. They're very stingy on basically who gets to use their stuff, when they get to use it, this, that, and the other... And I don't, I don't see it happening for Nintendo. Certainly not for Smash Bros. I know that they could potentially profit from it if they, you know, let Nintendo use their IP. But you got to think, another third-party developer is helping work on this game. They're going to get a fair share of money. Uh, whoever ends up else, if anybody ends up lending a third-party character, they're going to get money. But Square, I just, no matter who, it, it could be Geno, it could be Sora, it could be Cloud, it could be anybody popular you could think of. Not so much Cloud, because, you know, he hasn't really appeared on, on a Nintendo console, like, at all. But anybody you can think of that's, that's popular, that's been for the Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, or any other franchise, even Chrono, Chrono Trigger, anybody you can think of that was popular from Square Enix on, you know, past Nintendo consoles from Nintendo Entertainment System all the way to the Wii, you can basically shoot them down because Square is just, they're very, very stingy. They do not let people use their intellectual properties worth shit. It, uh, there, there's a reason Gino wasn't in Brawl, and it's not because, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, it couldn't happen, this, that, and the other. I'm sure they probably had talks about it. He was the number one most requested character in Japan and North America, you know, either up there with Sonic or at least in the top two. Everybody else from at least the top five made it to the game, minus him. Why? Because he's owned by Square. That's it. And who owns Square? Sora. Although not entirely. Disney also owns... He, they basically own the majority of, of, of Sora's actual character because he represents Kingdom Hearts, which in itself is a crossover between the Disney universe and the Final Fantasy universe. And due to this, Sora, to my big surprise, actually counts as a Disney character. Well, boy, how did I not figure out that before? Yes, I knew about this going into this video, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'd make the jump of a transition from talking about Square to Disney. Because if you want to talk about people who are really, really whorish on who they like to keep a hold on, it's definitely Disney and their Buena Vista games who... Definitely have some sort of say in Kingdom Hearts. Of course, Buena Vista Games was used to be known as Disney Interactive. They have since got a new name um, since like 2005 or 2006. So if you thought Square was bad with their intellectual property, good luck in hell for getting Disney to give Sora to anybody, whether that be for All-Stars or Smash Brothers 4, to 
basically be used in a fighting game. Now, I will say this, that Disney would probably be way more open to Sora appearing with, for the most part, family-friendly Nintendo characters in a fighting smasher than a bunch of mature-rated PlayStation characters that were thrown together in All-Stars. On top of this, I still don't see it happening. Sure, you may get games that are ported to the 3DS and the Wii U that are licensed by Square and, and Disney for, for shipping, like, like Dream Drop Distance and 358 Days Before That, Chain of Memories. But when it gets down to the nitty-gritty, these are two companies that do not really share anything with anybody else. And third-party character basically means lending your IP to another company to profit from it, and you gain a little bit of profit in return from letting your character help draw for the franchise. So it would no doubt be a draw. I mean, there's plenty of Kingdom Hearts fans out there, and I think he would do rather good business for the game. That's not me talking out of my ass. I mean, he would. He would have did good business for PlayStation All-Stars too. But there's a reason... Square characters have not shown up in, in other, you know, as guest characters. There's one fluke ever, and that's Geno appearing in Superstar Saga, which wasn't even really developed by a Nintendo second party, more of a third party, and that was a, and all he was was really a vending machine looking puppet thing. I, I don't really count that, and they were given credit for it. One little fluke, and you don't, you didn't even get to play as him in the game. But let's get away from the negatives and see how well of a character he'd play out. He'd play out as the more agile, flippy version of, you know, a Link or a Marth. He'd have a lot of the different combinations you use, where, you know, you jump, you spin around with your Keyblade. You would do, you could use your guard for block. You could, um, I'm trying to think of some of his other attacks. You could, you know, up swipe, uh, down chop with the Keyblade. Basically how you attack regular enemies in the game, which is a motion like this. And then you go up and you go down. Uh, as I said, you could guard for block, you could do the guard to block other enemies' attacks. And for final smashes, you could use any sort of his, his drive forms from Kingdom Hearts 2. Obviously, he'd look like he'd look like from Kingdom Hearts 2. That's definitely his most recent look. It modernized it a little bit for the Wii U grab. Well, you wouldn't really need to modernize shit. You just need to move it from PlayStation 2 graphics to Wii U graphics. It's just like one touch up basically a, bit, a bit, pretty big improvement but basically modernize his look in terms of graphics give him the kingdom hearts 2 look and you know you can either keep it at valor form master form wisdom form or you can have him change different forms i see that kind of being like a final smash or you can actually have it be a special ability uh you know you collect certain items or you build up a certain Maybe have it be like an extra feature. Have them have like a little drive thing that builds up, and you can use it when you press. When you build up enough of it, like two or three, you can press down B, and that's your, that's your Valor form. Other than that, his B attacks really, really stump me because he's somebody who would really, really use like like smash attacks, which are regular A's, side A's, up A's, and down A's, on top of you know blocking and you know counters and all that. Uh, I'm really trying to think because, you know, I could think of a billion Final Smash. You could do the, the Trinity thing with Sora, Donald, and, and Goofy. Of course, that's even more of an issue because those are actual Disney characters. I know I mentioned Sora being an official Disney character himself, but you could still kind of count him as a square character. Uh, Donald and Goofy, on the other hand, are 100% Disney characters. So them making it as even like a little appearance like that to help you clear an arena of opponents seems a little bit off. But I'm, you know, this is fantasy. He's not, he definitely has no chance of making it in the game anyway. So let's bring up cool ideas like that. Uh, I'm really trying to think. Maybe you could get, drink a potion to regain some of your, uh, the or like formulate a potion that you can drink and you could bring your damage meter down. You know, it heals you in the game. That would be technically healing you in Smash Brothers. You could, you could use fire. You know, it, Use the B button for magic spells. You know, certain B does fire. You could cast a rogue on yourself, and it prevents you from doing damage. I mean, if you really follow what he can do, yeah, make, make the magic button, the magic options, and item options that you use in the game for, for his uh, different B attacks. Except for up B, which is usually always for a recovery. Down B would be to turn into drive when you're able to, unless you want to use that as a final smash. If not, you could use it for some other buttfuck thing. Uh, you know... Which is fine, but uh, yeah, use your use B for magic. Like um, yeah, side A would be fire. You, know, you could do thunder. 
You can do a relegate. There's many different things you can do with regular B, side B, with either the side Bs, and down B. There's plenty of different magic and, and forms you could use. Uh, another thing is he could probably use a summon. And if you don't want to go into uh, Disney characters, you know, we already have assist trophies. Why don't you have him use summon gems that you have to collect in, like, maybe, like, a single-player mode that are of Nintendo characters? Instead of uh, summoning, like, a, like, a Simba or a Genie, you would summon, like, a Nintendo legend, like, you know, an old protagonist from the past. Let's just take a look here. Like, like uh, who could we use it as, as an odd example? Uh, I'm trying to think of people who haven't really made an appearance in Smash Brothers that are all faces. You know, you could even reuse some, like like the Stan the Bug Killing Guy, or uh, who is from Super Nintendo. I could use this as a really quick example. Uh, you know, any of the extra, you know, Baby Mario and Luigi, for instance, would be another cool little thing to summon. If they aren't going to be their own character, you know, like, like an Ice Climbers like pairing, you could summon them. So I've just drawn blanks for different obscure but cool characters to use. Like, I mean, there are plenty of modern characters I could have thought of, but I'm trying to use variety's sake here, people, and I have no script, so calm down. <laughs> so, you know, you could use that, which would prevent any more use of, of Disney-age in, in him in terms of a Final Smash. So you can use Valor form, you could summon, you can use any sort of thing that your drive uh, gauge is used for in, uh, in act the actual Kingdom Hearts 2 game. And, of course, A's would be his regular combinations with the Keyblade. There are many of them. There's the spinning Keyblade attack. There's, you know, where you hit somebody and you throw it. There's the throwing Keyblade attack. There's guard. There's downward slash and upward slash. There, there's just a, a whole smorgasbord of attacks you could actually use. Anyway, that's it. Would I love to see Sora in Smash Brothers? Yes, he's secretly, in my mind, one of my top characters I'd love to see in Smash Brothers. Does he have any likelihood of happening? The fact that he's owned by both Square and Disney gives him probably... Although he gets a little more hope than Banjo and Kazooie because they're actually owned by the opposition, uh, opposing fucking rival company in Microsoft. Whereas they are... he they technically are owned by a third party. I mean, Buena Vista Games and Square Enix both make games for all three companies. But it's still Disney and Square. And they will do and keep their IPs as close to their chest as fucking possible. Anyway, I'm Spoon Beast. I'm out, and I'll see y'all next week. Have a good night, everybody.